So guys, we're going to remember that this drawing was just the starting point to get us back into drawing. But I did use it when developing this study, which then became the next piece. Now, the thing I'm going to offer you now is another option. It's inspired by something a little bit different. I'm just going to zoom my camera out. And you can see a birthday card. It stands up three dimensionally, plus a little support. But it's this kind of cut out card idea. This one's a great example of what I'm thinking. It obviously stands up. You can see the zigzag structure of it. And there's a front panel and a middle panel and a back panel. And it's printed on both sides. You wouldn't necessarily have to take it that far. Now to develop a design like that, what I propose we do is we get ourselves a piece of paper. Now you could do a, a two panel design. I'm going to propose a three panel. So I'm going to fold it. You could measure this and get three equal panels. You could do it just by folding. As long as I'm parallel with the edge, I know that this piece of paper will ultimately stand up on the table. And that's what I want it to do. So here's one I've prepared earlier. Now you'll be able to see here that I've started sketching my favourite bit the owl. Even though I'm doing an architectural image, I'm finding a way to shoehorn this owl into everything I'm doing. So I've drawn the owl and I've drawn the railings on the front panel that's facing us. Now on the next panel that would face us would be this side and I've started to draw an archway. And on the back panel, the one that's facing us, it would be this. So if I open out my image, that's obviously the clock tower, you can see how I've constructed this drawing. It is a little bit confusing, so you need to be making yourself a prototype, just like I'm doing here. Now, on the front panel, I've probably cut this out so that my owl is a freestanding element. So you're probably thinking, what is she doing now? I can't really get into that bit, so I'm gonna to have to move things around. But this is one of those things, you've got to be doing it to work it out. Now let's talk Lego. When you get your first Lego kit, you follow the instructions and you make it exactly as is on the packet. You go around playing with it for a while and some bits fall off and end up in your Lego box, get jumbled with other stuff. And eventually you start making your own stuff from the Lego. Some it's based on whatever it was in the first place. Sometimes it's completely new. This is that point when you start doing something new. And for the moment, I'm just going to cut that panel here. So now on the front panel, you can see the owl. You could say, well, couldn't you put the railings out? Yes, I could, but this is a prototype image. Now I'm thinking about cutting this arch out. If I was doing this for real, if this was my real one, I would probably construct this arch a little bit better. And I position this arch so it is visible behind the owl. So if I put the owl directly in front of it, you might not see it. Now, imagine if I have Hugh Oldham in here. I've just thought of that as an idea. But you can't see my clock tower unless I create some sort of roof line. Now remember, in this work, it doesn't pictorially make sense. It's sort of suggesting this journey into MGS. Remember the video where I walk through the arch and I'm coming into the quad. So here you can sort of see this construction. That line looks a bit boring, but it sort of represents that coming across. But I might develop that in some way later. In the very back panel, put the weather vane up here. Would the weather vane be very flimsy, so I might have to sort of connect it to something like a cloud or something in the background. But you can see this is a prototype style idea for one of those cards. Can you imagine if we actually do this and we make them as cards, how cool that would be. So you can see those three levels constructed. It's all based upon our original reference pictures and drawing. Now you might say this isn't at the moment in any way in the style of our artist, but this is now where we would go working into it to develop the style of the artist. Hi guys, I've brought you to an unusual place. This is my cardboard recycling and we'll have a look inside it. This looks great, but I know that's slightly waxy and I don't think I'll be able to draw on it with a pen. 
Now I'm going to look for the things. You might think this is no good because it's got print on one side. But if we open it up, we could use the other side. That's very rough cardboard, but that's easy to draw on. Similarly, so is this. It might look a bit bent and broken, but it would do the job quite well. What else can I find? This is a, a piece of uh, corrugated cardboard. And if I peeled off the surface, I might be able to use that for some bricks. Might give that a try. So I might take a few things to use as samples. Um, and I might not use them all for the final thing. But just have a rummage around and see what you've got at home. So guys, I'm now down in the kitchen because I needed to get to the recycle bin. And I found a series of different packaging. And remember, it's not the outside one. It's the raw cardboard side. So this one's quite a white one. A little bit wrinkly, but it might do the job. I've got a box with little dishwasher tablets. I know this is a nice brown colour inside. So I'm just cutting myself some panels that I can work with. That's quite a brown colour, wouldn't look nice for a brick wall. And this one is a pizza box. Quite a big panel here. So I'm just cutting the sections. Now, if you have some regular cardboard, that's absolutely fine, but you can use these recycled materials if you do not. Now, here is the model we're making, or I'm making, and I want to put different materials in each panel because I'm going to do this as a three-stage construction. So each panel is going to be made as a separate section. So see what I've done here. I've taken the panel and I've put it behind. I get my pencil and very carefully draw around the profile because that's the bit I'm going to cut out. Now, you might have thought this through already and realised I probably need some tabs to construct it, but at the moment, I'm just interested in creating the panels. So that's the first one. Now, I think this one will be relatively easy to cut out with scissors. I need it very straight across the bottom because that's the edge that it's going to stand upon. Cutting off the excess, you've seen me do that in other tasks because the excess is actually quite restrictive. So I'm using the heel of the scissor. Notice what I'm doing. I'm cutting from here at this point, the heel of the scissor, using the length of the blade. Now, if you do big cuts like this, you'll find that you don't get that kind of snippy little edge where it goes very uneven. Whenever people say they're not very good with scissors, it's because they're cutting from this bit here and you get like a little jaggy edge. So if I cut from here, I'm trying not to bend my cardboard so it doesn't lose its structural integrity. You see what I'm doing there? I'm going back now to here, to the heel, and I'm cutting around. Now, my next panel is going to be this brick wall. So I've got my brown card and I'm going to put it there. Now in this case, when I cut a loose panel, I don't have a straight edge. So I'm going to have to use a ruler to draw a straight edge. So I've cut a straight edge and now I can position this inside, right to the corner. And remember this is a prototype, it wasn't perfect when I made it, like this arch isn't particularly neat. So I'm going to just draw a line, vertical line at this side here where that panel would end. That line doesn't look square at 90 degrees here, so I'm going to just put a marker there and use a set square, or in this case I'm going to use my um, cutting that because it's got markers on it. So if I just put a line across here, I know that that is at 90 degrees here. And that vertical line's come down there. Now obviously here at this point, I could measure it. I'm gonna do it centimeters. And it is 9.7 to there. And 9.7 again. So you see that wasn't perfectly accurate. Now, you can use your scissors, or if you have a craft knife, obviously you can use a craft knife, but you require a cutting mat or a board. Do not attempt to use a craft knife without one. I also recommend that you speak to an adult. Do not start using a craft knife, because even though you feel like you're very confident, I'm confident, but I still have accidents. They are dangerous pieces of equipment. So make sure you, oh, didn't do it on the line. Make sure if you are using one, you can using a ruler or a safety ruler. It's not a great idea to use a plastic ruler because you can easily just take little bits out of it and then if you want to draw a straight line it's going to be frustrating later. But I'm just going to draw these bits on for now. Now, 
I'm going to get my first panel again. Now I've not left myself any tabs because I'm going to make those all later. So I have my back panel and now I have my front panel. I'm just going to line the two and they line quite well. Now in this design I have a cut out arch section and I've been around the kitchen looking for things I could draw around. The rubber is not particularly regular but this little glass is. So I'm going to work out where I want it. Now if I put it too far this way it will be behind the owl. But I'd like to see a bit more of it because I'm thinking of putting Hugh Alden behind it. Do I want it high up? There's not much space at the top if I go too high. So I'm going to put it back here. I need a little bit of support there. So I'm going to put it maybe central to that space. And I only really need the top of the arch. Now if you don't have a glass the right size, obviously you could use a compass. You could uh, make a little template and draw around it. So I'm just by eye, making sure this is parallel with the edge. And this side is parallel with the edge. Now I have a concern that if I do this, it's going to be a bit bendy. So I'm going to, for the moment, leave a little support bridge across the bottom. You'll see when I come onto the front panel, I'm going to do a similar thing. So I'm going to cut out that section. So at this point, having a knife is handy. But if you don't, you could do without the support section and you could stick a piece in later if you require one. So along the straights, I'm going straight with the... I might actually find it easier to cut with the scissors along the arc. My scissors here are quite big. I'm just going to take that panel out. And, and be careful on the corners because what you don't want to do is rip it. And if you do rip it, remember, the back's just the packaging. And I'm just going to tear that across there. So, I'm going to cut now, cut into there with the heel of the scissor, remember? Let me just see if I can do it in one long sweep. Nope. So here I have the first panel and the second panel and now I've cut out the fence, you can see it's very wobbly, especially at this point, it's a very weak point, it will snap. So what I've done is I've measured across the back and I've cut myself a strip, I've cut it out on my grey card um, and I'm going to pop that later on, I'm going to stick it across the back there. So at the point where it is the weakest point, it's going to be then supported and braced by another piece of card. Now, because the field, if you're at Old Hall Lane looking across towards the school, the field will be behind it. I'm probably going to make that green. There's no point in me doing anything with that. I'll probably paint it green or colour it green and then stick it onto here when I put the black on there and make it quicker for me than working around the sections. Of course, that one was braced from before and you might just see it, but it doesn't matter too much. I could even just paint it so it's like the ground if I wanted to, it would look like it's in the distance. Now, on the top panel, I've started the clock tab. I need to go back and look at my reference material, which is upstairs. I'm going to leave that. Now, these panels need to connect together. And what I've done is I found on the corner of my packaging, there's already a score. So I'm using that. And I'm just going to cut parallel lines because I just need a section that I can use as a sort of tab. If you're making the net of a building, as we did if you did the Amsterdam houses, obviously had to leave tabs now you don't really have to be parallel to be honest with you but to make it look neat if they were visible i'm making sure they are roughly parallel now you could actually measure them or you could approximately do what i'm doing here so at the moment i'm making myself a little kit of bits so this front panel is going to this sorry the middle panel is going to join onto here and the front panel onto here so the act uh, the joining point is there and there and here and here and here. So I need it to be this length to go across these panels. So all I'm going to do is pop it in line, get my pencil, measure it and use my scissors to cut it and do the same on this one and then cut another one and then I'll assemble it later. But I'm not assembling anything until I've decorated all the surfaces. So guys, if you've watched the earlier videos, or you could go back and have a look at them now if you wanted to, you'll see the drawn version of the owl, 
you see the drawn version over the mixed media. So in this stage, obviously I've done this twice already in different ways, and I really like this owl, that's what keeps featuring in the work. There's obviously the detail I need to put into it that started on the prototype, and I would use the reference material from the sheet. But I want to do something different yet again. So I'm going to try and get some collage down on the owl itself. And I have my Vogue magazine that I was using before from March 2019. And I'm going to look for something. I kind of like something that's a greeny blue colour. So I'm just flicking through the pages. Now I can't emphasise enough. If you've got magazines in your house, check with whoever they belong to. That's quite a nice colour. That's what I sort of had in mind. It's quite nice with the architectural shapes into it as well. This is nice too. So it's this kind of colour that I'm looking for, something along this line. I think the one I, that I first saw that was quite bright is probably the one I'm going to use. Let me go back and see if I can find it. So if you want to use a magazine, make sure you have checked with whoever owns it. So I'm going to just tear the strip up here. So I have the piece that I require. I'm going to move the magazine out of the way. Now what I'm thinking of doing is just having a bit of colour into the owl. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my Pritt stick. I'm running low on Pritt stick here. The Pritt stick is a good adhesive for this. You can obviously use other adhesives. If they've got a lot of water content, remember, it will wrinkle. So Pritt stick is really good for this sort of job. If it's got any kind of warning sign on it, a spirit based material i would suggest you don't use it now on there there's a little bit of skin i don't particularly want that but i'm just going to pop the owl on there let's have a look pop that down now i can see if i hold it up to the light i've got my lamp on my desk but it's just about okay i can see it's not quite to the edge but i think i can get away with that so i could let that sit and dry while i'm doing other things or i could actually cut around it whilst it is slightly wet now you could just tear it and have a torn edge. But I want quite a slick edge around my owl. Now I'm not doing it all over the fence because I'm really just going to use this as a base to draw over the top over it so that I can see some colour coming through it rather than it just be um, completely flat like the white of the paper in the first exercise. It's a strange thing here when I'm doing this. I'm looking at what I'm doing around the side of the camera. I'm not always looking at the camera. So I don't know necessarily if I've got things in or out of shot. Some of this stuff goes out of shot when I'm making. Right, that will do the job. So I'm just making sure it's nicely stuck down. It's a bit wrinkly in places. These scraps I don't require anymore. I'm just putting them in my bin, which I keep handy right beside where I'm working. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and flat. And yet again, using the reference material, including my own drawings, I'm going to just sketch the owl's face back in. Now, if you weren't confident to do this, you could have traced it previously. And again, my owl's kind of getting quite a stylized look about it as I've drawn it several times. It's got a mark on its chest as it comes across there. This one comes down here. Let's just get the Not worrying too much about it at this moment in time. One would come down there. It actually comes in a bit that post, but let's not worry too much about that. And then I'm going to start with the fine liner. Now as you've seen, the pencil doesn't work particularly well on here, but I do know the fine liner should work okay. So off I go again, draw with the fine liner, and you could go for a quite textural mark like I'm doing here, or a much smoother line depending on the style you're developing. Obviously, if you need to look back to the artist's reference to give you some ideas, that's great as well. So I would just keep working and drawing into the owl. Now, it's going to take a little while to do this. I'm going to work on one panel at a time. You can see the colour of the paper coming through, which is adding something new to it. On this bit here, where it's just the fence. You can't really see the fence in my picture. I'm just going to reach into my drawer. I do have a slightly thicker 
felt oh, wrong colour and picked up a, a green. I thought I picked up a black then. Rooting around in the drawer, can't find a black. Can't find a thick black I was looking for, so I'll have to use a medium. So I'm going to just put some post it note underneath where I'm working because I'm just going to colour that in. Now, on here, see how I'm just working over the edge? That's where I've got a post it note below it. Oh, I just want a solid fill. You might have some paint you want to try for this. Remember, it's a really weak point where it joins on there, so I'm just holding it. Now, that green felt tip I've just found is going to be useful to me in a minute. You can see what I'm doing there, I'm working in there. So I'm using different pens and working on one section. Now, if you recall, I was going to put a little section in behind here with the school field on. The green pen I pulled out by accident is now going to come to its own. Yet again, because I'm working with a piece of paper below, Quite bright green, isn't it, for the school field? Could add some different textures or different greens onto there. You might decide you want some detail onto it, but it's going to be quite small. I'm going to just keep it plain at the moment. And then that would be ready, once I finish this section, to stick below. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'll see you again in a few minutes. Right, guys. So I have been working into this for a few minutes and I do my thing where if I can, I can find thin and thick pens to build things up and add different pace of marks. So I'm building up some more textures in it until I feel happy with it. Now, if you go too far, don't worry too much because when we go back to school, there's always things we can do to, to work back into and things we can show you in the classroom. And this is one of those things that we might continue doing a little bit more on when we go back into the classroom whenever that will be. So I'm quite happy with this, although I've said that and I've decided I want a bit more on it. Now I think the top of these posts looks a little bit abrupt. I know they're slightly rounded, so this is how fiddly I am. I'm just going to go and take the edge off the top of them. By putting the little bit of a rounded shape on them, it's going to suggest they've kind of got a rounded profile. This attention to detail is the difference between one grey band probably and the next, because you're taking it to a slightly higher, a slightly more resolved level. Obviously it could go wrong, but you're thinking something through to quite a nice degree. That one looks a bit wonky, so I'm going to go back at it. Every time I pick it up at that weak point, it's getting knocked around a little bit. But this is the point where I'm now going to join this to the strip of green I have. Now, do we think that green's okay or do I need to add anything else to it? So I'm going to put my big light on going back in my drawer because I know I've got a second pen. Now the bit we're going to see is only this section here. So I am just going to add some marks. You could say, but the grass would be growing vertically. But in the distance, you wouldn't see the sort of individual grass. I'm going to put in lighter colours in the distance, by building up sort of a more dense mark in the foreground. And again, you could look at artists and see how they've handled that. Now, if you don't think that looks quite right, you could wet it and just smudge it a little bit. I'm going to get a print stick again. And I'm going to use what's my little mat at the moment, which is the back of some post it notes. And this is the print stick that's running out. I might have to use the other print stick that was very dry and sticky because it was very old. Not running out, but it's a bit like toffee, this one. And you see why I've got to work on a surface. I don't want that all over my desk. It'll be driving me insane in a few minutes. So I'm going to take this and lift it up carefully. It's very weak at that point now. So if it was really weak, I could add another little piece of card under that as well. So very carefully, it's a bit fiddly to show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I am going to position it. This bit's a glue onto it. I'm not too fussed at the moment. I'll deal with them afterwards. It's on the top surface. I can go over it along with a pen. If I get it roughly in the right position and it goes beyond the edge and I want to trim it later, I might just let that dry. You can see some marks built up in here because the magazine paper wasn't absorbing it very evenly. And I'll let those marks stay there because I thought it looks a bit like the surface of the paint onto the railings where it's been thick over many, many years. So this panel is essentially finished. And next, I'm going to pick up the next panel and start thinking about how to handle this. This is going to be predominantly bricks. I'm not going to put too much stuff onto this panel, but I have decided along this bottom line, I'm going to create a section that's like the foreground. So I might 
just along this line, go back to my magazine and look for something that I can collage into there. Pretty much leaving this as it is and maybe just adding some more brick-like textures somehow onto it. I'll have a think about how to do that in a minute. So you might remember when I was in the recycling bin before, I did find a little strip of corrugated card and quite like the idea of it maybe being bricks. So I'm giving it a try. I've found another piece now. And I'm having to peel off this upper surface. It is an absolute faff to do it. And to get it off, I found that if I run a pencil in the lines, it breaks it up a little bit. I have to pick all these loose bits off. Now, I don't want to be doing this all day, that's for sure, because it's not much fun. You might enjoy this, so you might want to do it. But it's not an essential thing. This is one of those things where you might just want to try something out. So it's this bit that I don't like doing. I'm having to fiddle around with it. I am keen to get some of these textures. So I'm going to persevere. Now, if I do it over the whole surface, it's going to take me quite a long time. What I'm thinking about doing is just putting it around the arch. It's going to become very tricky to do it around the actual arch. So I'm going to just, on the back of it, put a strip that is parallel. I have a little strip that I could pop there. I want to cut a similar strip to go on the opposite side. And we might just say we could just cut it so it goes around the arch, but the trouble with that is the brick work around the arch, like you can just maybe you can see it in there, it radiates out from the center point. So I might need to think this through and do it in little sections. So I cut little strips of it. Can I do it? We need to be about the same distance as that. I'm going to sit and fiddle around with this for a few minutes. I'm going to prick stick them on and see if by just popping them on at a slight angle, I can create that arch. That very central part has a much higher section and make a feature like that in the middle. See you in a few minutes. So I continued to print stick very carefully the corrugated card around the arch, positioning it until I was happy with it. The next thing I went on to do was work with a fine liner. I've obviously gone on fast forward here, I didn't do it this quickly. And start to build parallel lines. You'll see me just demonstrate a few more here. I look back at some of my earlier work and especially the broken lines in John Piper. They became a feature of this section so it wasn't too even and looks like the old brickwork of the Manchester Grammar School building. After drawing the horizontal lines then obviously you need to work back into it with the vertical lines. Look at the position of them. So I've drawn the bricks on. They're not true to scale if we were to look at the real building. Now I've just put them in as little lines and if I really want to take it to the next level, see how I'm just working around them and connecting and taking some of the regularity out of it. Almost like a continuous line, very much like a continuous line. So we'll have a look at this section and review this section in just a moment when I've done a little bit more. To some extent, because I've started, I'll probably have to finish. You see the difference? It's kind of just changed it a little bit. And I'm going to continue that. Now, I did previously on the John Piper one, work back into it with a little bit of water. And I might try that on here. I'll have a look at that in a moment when I finish this stage. So I've gone on to get some water and I've got that in a pretty stick lid as so I don't have my water pot to hand. And you can see me just applying it. And because it's water-based pen, you can see a little bit of the, the ink running. And that's putting some variation and some age into the brickwork. If you look back at the reference material, you can see where this idea comes from. And I'm just quickly working around the image, just sort of deciding where to put a little bit more work. If you put too much down, don't worry, you can always look back at your reference material and go back into it with another material. So I've now taken the front panel and I've positioned it in front. I've got the tab from the box from before and I'm just now making sure it's folded nicely. I'm going to apply Pritt Stick, putting a little piece of paper underneath it. So Pritt Stick across the surface. And then 
securing the front panel in place. Now, when I actually did this, I had to modify it and create a little step in it because it was quite a tight join. So I put a further fold into it. But you can just see that it's then able to join on. Now, I've joined it onto the back. If you notice that I put it behind the panel, the second panel. So again, I'm putting my Pritt stick. Good coat of Pritt stick here, guys. Don't, don't be cautious or have you used double sided sticky tape that would work as well and like I say I didn't put that too tight in the end I had to pull that little bit away see how it's standing at a 90 degree angle when it opens that's me pulling it back a little bit and in the end I put a further fold in it so it had like a little stepped panel in the side but you can see it as look in relation to the original prototype and work out where I'm going to pop you Oldham in the gap so guys, just a quick point that originally I had a folded piece of card that in profile was like that. And what I've actually done is just here, I've added another folding. So instead of it just being this point where it didn't fold particularly flat, I've put another folding to create a join that has a flat base. This one's stuck to the front panel. This is stuck to the back panel. So I've moved on to the back panel and what I'm seeing here is I've just basically put a paint base down. You could obviously work with magazines if you don't have any paints or other materials and do some collage. But the key is that I'm working back into it with my fine liner to do the overdrawing. Remember fine liner works better than pencil if you've got some magazine base down. I'm going in just putting in broken lines like the work of John Piper I've already looked at. I've used concentric circles on the clock face. I do have a circle template, remember, that's how I've done that so accurately. It's not so easy if you don't. I put a center marker in, the horizontals, the verticals, and then to divide up the clock face, see what I'm doing with pencil? Just popping those in with pencil while I just roughly work it out and then freehanding back over the top of them. It will always have that hand-drawn feel about it, which we, we want, and it's the style of our artists as well, so that works. Just keep fiddling around with a little bit of detail. I'm thinking about the flagpole there, maybe sticking something on the reverse. Now, on the roof, I've got fine liner and it's over a little bit of grey, so I'm wetting it. If you think that the building was built in the 1920s and while there have been refurbishments, obviously we want to show some of the age of the building. So I might have added a bit too much water and if I have, when it's dry, I can work back into it with a little bit of fine liner. quite like that so I decided just to put a bit of it into the clock tower as well. So now I'm going back on to think about the position of things on that back panel on that big brick wall. I'm thinking Hugh Oldham would be a good scale from the worksheet, the printed out copy I have before me. So I'm just working out what to do with that. I also happen to have a photocopy of my original drawing where I've got the window. So I decide I want the window into this but fortunately I have a copy. If you were in school, we'd obviously do that as well. Now in the next video, I've traced you all them just to get the shape because I'm going to print stick that now onto a piece of the magazine paper because I want some of that greeny color coming through. You can trace transfer, but obviously notice it's in reverse. If you wanted it the right way around, you'd have to draw over the back and then draw over the front again. I do have a video about transfer techniques if you are interested. So I just put a little bit of print stick on it. and then position it. And then we're just gonna work around there with a pair of scissors and cut it out. So the tracing paper will be removed in just a moment. This is just giving me an accurate shape to speed up proceedings. So I've finished cutting him out, but I really need to be careful with the position now. So I'm going to start aligning my whole image. I'm going to pop that in position. And then I want to see where I want him. So if I put him too low, it doesn't really work very effectively. I think he's better, like he's been trapped in the arch. Now we don't want him floating around like some kind of mirage. But he is on a plinth in the quad, if you can see the reference material. Now... He used to be at the back of music and in 2015 he was moved to the quad um, and that's where he lives now. So I'm just 
drawing in a little block roughly where I want it and that's the baseline but it's going to work fine because I'm just popping it on there and I found a piece of appropriate brown paper so I'm now going to draw on here and cut this out so I've cut out my section and you can see pencil lines on one side so I'm going to turn it over so that the reverse doesn't have them obviously you could take a rubber and you could rub them out so I'm going to just get some glue on the back of that and use a scrap piece of paper which is the stickiest glue on the planet this glue is near the end of its life no, that's very messy on the back so I have to cut it down very carefully so I've made it so it will look like it stood onto the grey of the quad. Carefully popped it down. And on here, remember, I've got a little bit of tracing on top of it. So I'm going to carefully take that off. It's pulled a little bit of the surface off. But I'm going to draw the detail in with a fine liner. Now I've got my reference material. I've got this as a little guide to scale right beside where I'm going to work. And I'll work really carefully. So we can get that in shot. I'm going to start drawing it into his hat. I think that his eyes are just like these kind of darkish areas. See how I'm working just shapes into I'm not trying to draw little face details. Just putting a little bit of shadow under his nose. You can see where his mouth line is. Chin down here. So I'm just drawing in some shadowy areas but I'm certainly not trying to draw mega detail into here I'm going to try and capture something of Hugh Oldham oh, that'd be absolutely spot on All right guys I'll see you again in a few minutes right guys I've made my tiny Hugh Oldham and before I stick him on I'm thinking of popping some brick textures onto this wall um, I'm going to explore what I could use because I don't particularly want to do what I did on the arch because if I did, these ones are in the distance and while they're not too scale, I'm interested in them at least looking like they're further back so I do want something slightly smaller. I'll be back with you in a minute when I've worked it out. So what I actually went on to do was add 61 fine liner lines actually just running parallel but i know there's 61 because it's in my nature to count so on here i'm just adding a little bit of the water on the brush just to break them up like i did on the roof line just putting it on little patches i've obviously done this before i popped down he rolled them so i'm not working around him i'm working behind him very carefully with my very dried out prit stick i've resorted now to using the one that's not so dried out I'm using my finger as a glue spreader, not ideal. But I want it to have the glue really neatly and then carefully again checking the position is correct. And to make sure he's stuck down really well, I just put a piece of paper on top and press that rather than rubbing with my finger, especially because my finger's covered in glue. I take the window that I've cut out from my previous photocopy, look at the position of that as well, play around with that for a moment. And then, of course, I need to go back and apply glue using my dodgy fingernail technique. I don't recommend this at all. But mm -hmm. we're in lockdown and materials are tight. So again, checking for the final time. See what I've done? I've positioned it and then just adjusting and making sure it's parallel with the edge. Making sure it's all neat and in line. Thinking about the clock tower again now, and I'm thinking about the hands of the clock and start looking at the position of everything. Right, guys, so now it's the reveal. It is the reveal of the state of my hands. Look at them. I've got bits of paper stuck to me. I've got dried Pritt stick. I'm really sticky, but that is the role of an artist to get your hands dirty. So here we have in front of me the model as it stands. So if we look close at the front panel, we can see the owl, we can see the fence, we can see the field. We can look through the archway and we can see Hugh Oldham in the quad and the window. We can look above and we can see the clock tower. Now we all know that if I turn this around, da, 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 it's my curry box, it's my pizza box and it's my um, dishwasher tablet box. But what you begin to see is the potential. Now I could continue and think about the other model features we've made before and start building boxes into it to create 
multiple dimensions, we could even think about what the building is truly about. Obviously, we know it is a place of education and into the back panels, if we wanted it to be a model that someone could walk around and look at from every dimension, we could consider putting things on this wall. What could we consider? What would you put on side the building? Something that would represent a learning. We could go in the Mem Hall and look at the war memorials. We could think about how we could convey that. So there's lots of space here where we could think about a further dimension, a physical dimension, but an ideas dimension as well. So we can see it from different angles. I hope you enjoy giving this one a try.